Good morning, gang. Happy Saturday morning. Well, take two. Recorded the whole video and no audio. <laughs> kind of defeats the whole purpose. All right. So, uh, anybody else get the feeling that the world, we're starting to pick up some speed with that snowball going downhill? Interesting week we've had. Uh, more stuff coming out overnight as to what's going on. Not even really talking about the effects that the war in Israel is having on, having on us right now. Granted, if you have 20-something-year-old kids, yeah, there's a little concern about whether a draft is going to be reinstated or whatever. But not overwhelmingly. That, that, shouldn't, be the, that shouldn't be the biggest thing on your mind right now. Let's put it that way. News overnight, we had another bank failure yesterday, a small bank. This was Citizens Bank in Iowa, <clears throat> uh, was taken over by the FDIC last night. It shouldn't have too much effect on anything. The people have already been told they can still write checks, they can still write, use their debit cards or whatever, uh, that just come Monday morning, their bank will be absorbed by another local bank there in Iowa. Uh, this isn't the big citizens bank, <clears throat> but it's another cause for concern. Why? Because you know, they came out a couple of weeks ago and said they were going to close a few branches. Okay, And then two weeks later, they're out of business. Other banks that have said they're going to close branches in the last week, Bank of America, big bank, PNC, big bank. Fifth Third, middle-sized bank. Okay, The one I'd watch is Fifth Third. Okay. But another issue where we have, hmm, banking industry problem. Kind of goes into what I was talking about yesterday with the automatic clearinghouse, the ACH, your direct deposits, your bill payment not working. Still hasn't been fixed. Okay, There's still problems, so there's still plenty of people out there who have not got their paychecks from yesterday. Okay, So it means the normal Saturday morning grocery shopping ain't happening today. You get issues like that. Well, maybe not going grocery shopping, and eh, maybe not that big of a deal, right? Because, hey, considering what's going on with the supply chain, maybe not so much in the store or any way to buy. You all know Maersk, right? You know, big... Dutch shipping company, you know, you see all the shipping containers that say Maersk on the side of them, you know, huge freighters carrying thousands of shipping containers on them. If they announced this week they're laying off another 3,500 people on top of the 6,500 that they've already laid off. Yeah, that's 10,000 people, guys. That's 10% of their workforce. Okay. Now remember, we don't make anything here anymore. Everything we get comes from China or Vietnam or India or Korea or whatever. No shipping, no product on the shelf. You go, well, it's not no shipping. Okay, it's 10% less. So now just you can expect 10% less on the shelves. 10% less when you're searching on Amazon or whatever, you know. But we get the privilege <clears throat> of paying inflated prices for it, right? You know, think about other things. Well, we got Teamsters are talking about trucking or uh, striking. We have just wrapped up with the UPS uh, strike or potential for one. FedEx can't hire enough drivers. They've got to contract this stuff out. So, yeah, the supply chain, we got a little problem. We're not even going to go into Joe and his wanting electric everything. Okay, good luck. And I want to see electric trains, how well those work, and not the ones that go under the Christmas tree. So we can't get stuff. <clears throat> and what we can get is ridiculously expensive, right? You know, rent's gone up, interest rates have gone up, housing prices have gone up, food's gone up, gas has gone up, any basic household necessity's gone up. I'm sure there are things that have come down, too. You know, you 
but maybe if you're lucky, you could find, oh, I don't know, Kodak film is cheaper than it was a year ago, or a sewing machine, you know, all those things that nobody buys anymore are probably cheaper. <clears throat> but the stuff you need, like, oh, I don't know, food, housing, tools, electricity, you name it, has gone up. And don't give me any of these BS numbers that, gee, inflation's only 4%, and look at me, you know, Joe Biden, look at me, inflation is down to the lowest level in my presidency. It's still more than double what it was at the end of Trump's presidency. Mind you, we've got 4 plus percent inflation now. We had 1.8% inflation in the last months of Trump's presidency. <clears throat> and mind you, that's not, gee, it's come down. No, that's on top of the 9% we had last year. So it's not, gee, we came down, the prices got cheaper from 9% up to 4% up. No, it's we got 4% up on top of the 9% that we got last year. <clears throat> you know, let's talk about Lake City Ammo. And what happened with them? Gee, for 90 days, we're not going to sell any ammunition to the public. A couple of days later, we turn around and go, yeah, well, we're now going to sell all our ammo production to a Czech company. It's interesting. Okay. So now our military, you know, we're not going to sell ammunition to the civilian population because our military needs it all. Why? Hmm. Could be anything like what we talked about Yesterday, need more recruiters, cancel the Marine Corps ball. Hmm. And then after we decide that our military needs more ammo, hey, we'll get it from a foreign company. Great. Look how that look how well that's worked out for us in our economy, getting everything from a foreign company. Now let's support our military based on a foreign company. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but the rest of the world asks for our tanks, our planes, our weaponry, our weapon systems, our missiles, whether they are, you know, guided missiles or whether they are handheld, you know, rocket rockets. <clears throat> Can you see the United States? You know what? We're going to start buying all our ammunition from Ethiopia. Uh, no. Okay. You know. We need to protect ourselves. We do not need to be reliant on anybody else. But the problem we're getting now is nobody can afford any of this crap. I mean, I talked to my daughter two days ago. Now, mind you, college grad, degree in biology, works as a emergency tech in a emergency room in a hospital trying to go to PA school. Okay, Professional level job. She makes $17 an hour. She can move to California and take a, get a pay raise by going to work for McDonald's, which inherently there's a huge problem with that. The person who gives you the fries to make you ill gets paid more than the person in the emergency room is paid to save your freaking life from eating those fries. Just think about it that way for a second. So we're talking about, you know, what's going on, her applications to PA school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we get in talking about the economy a little bit. And she makes the comment to me. She goes, yeah, she goes, you know, it's tough. She goes, you know, right now my protein sources are eating canned beans and eggs because those are what are affordable. Here's somebody making $17 an hour, single, that can't afford to buy meat. <clears throat> And no, she's not going out partying with her friends or whatever. No, she lives in a $600 a month apartment. You know, yes, she's got student loans. Yes, she's got a car payment, okay? A very hundred and some odd dollar car payment. So before anybody goes, well, she's making cut back expenses. Okay, you remember when you were 24 years old too, okay? You know, you're, you're in the accumulation phase. But I was thinking as she's telling me, you know, what she makes and can't afford meat, I'm going, you make double the minimum wage. There's a lot of people out there who make less than that. People around Social Security take home less than that. And they're trying to starve us out. Do you guys see that this is the plan? 
take slowly take everything away from us. We're going to make housing too expensive where people can't afford it. We're going to make food too expensive where people can't afford it. We're going to make protecting yourself unavailable to the point where they can go, Hi, FBI, you're moving out today. Yeah, that's that's what's coming. You know, we're take we're taking over this property. It's it's in the national interest. You don't get your house anymore. We'll feed you. Move to your fifteen minute city. And unless you already have it, you aren't going to be able to say nope. You know what? I'm fine. I've got plenty of food. No, you're not coming here. Come a foot closer, and you're going home in a body bag. You know. Uh, no. I mean, this is where we need to be. We need to be ready because we're getting very close to the beginning of the tunnel. The tunnel being the SHTF event. And once we go into that tunnel, we're on our own. The objective is to come out the other side of the tunnel. And not everybody's gonna. The ones that come out the other side of the tunnel are the ones that are going to be around to rebuild this country. Okay. Economically, politically, morally, whole nine yards there to make America great again, to build it back better. <laughs> Anything's got to be better than what we've dealt with in the last two and a half years. I mean, even living during the Carter era was better than it is living during the Biden era. Okay, But, <clears throat> you know, I can't go back in, in history and find a time where people were hanging on by their fingernails as bad as they are now, unless we go back to Herbert Hoover, okay? And when Biden can look in the mirror and go, well, at least my economy is better than Hoover's, okay, there's a success. You know, let's talk about Setting the bar real low for Joe. But this is what we got. You know, it's coming up on Christmas. You know, we're going to be getting into Black Friday sales and Christmas shopping and everything very quickly. You all know that. Okay. This year, I think it's going to be pretty different. It's not going to be people going out and buying the wants as Christmas gifts for their spouse, their kids, whatever. It's going to be buying the needs. You know, the days of, oh my God, don't ever get your wife a vacuum cleaner for Christmas. That may be a little different this year. Honey, I got you a new pressure cooker. Honey, I got you a new cast iron skillet. Or the other way around. Honey, I got you a new shovel. Good. You know, it's those tools. You know, it's not going to be the tchotchke that you're going to put on the the mantle this year and go, oh, isn't that pretty? I've always wanted to look at one of these things that sits there and collects dust. Okay, no. It's going to be useful stuff. What's one of my daughter's Christmas presents going to be? A cooler full of meat. You know, it's pretty bad when... You're going to give somebody food for Christmas, and they're excited about it. And I'm not talking about like doing the food drive and stuff like that we do. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your working person who's trying to get ahead in life, and they're excited about a gift card to Kroger. Not to buy any, not to go buy a new sweater or some jewelry or something like that. To buy damn groceries. Okay. But are they going to be on the shelves? And if they are, for how long? Right? What's going to be available to you? And how long is it going to be? How long is it going to be until electricity is more expensive, heat's more expensive, gas is more expensive, housing is more expensive, anything is more expensive? Grab the necessities, not the wants, because your money may not be there tomorrow. 
Ask anybody who's had a bank failure. <laughs> Ask anybody who didn't get their paycheck yesterday. Okay, They'll get it eventually, but eventually it doesn't do me any good today. What do you have in your physical possession right now? If the balloon goes up this afternoon, are you ready? Do you have food, seeds, tools to, to create your own food? I mean, if you raise chickens or rabbits or cows or pigs or whatever, more power to you. You're ahead of a lot of us. Okay. Do you have something to eat? Do you have some sort of at least plan for water, right? I mean, storing water is difficult. It takes up a lot of space and it's very heavy. Okay? But do you have a plan to get it? Do you know where to get it? Do you have a well, a pond, a lake, a stream, you know, anything around? Do you know where it is and you have a plan to transport it? Simple stuff like that. Do you have ammunition? Do you have enough? Not that I could say there really ever is enough. Okay? But... I like to think a, a good loadout for a battle weapon, at least, is 10,000 rounds per person. Okay. And I know that's a personal thing. People are going to say, oh, that's way too many. You're not going to need that much, whatever. You know what? I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Okay. If I only need 6,000 rounds, cool. All right, fine. If I need 12, I'm screwed. But those things... Have you got the skills? Have you got the knowledge? Hey, great idea. Go grab some books. How to identify, I don't know, mushrooms or medicinal plants, things like that. You know, how to fix stuff. Do you have those skills? Do you, you know, if your door comes off today or gets blown off in the future, do you have what it would take to fix it? Or at least to cover the hole, okay? You know, I don't care how prepped you are. Oh, I've got a wood stove. I've got a fireplace. I've got everything. Your door's missing. A wood stove not doing you a whole lot of good if the cold air is just blowing in the house, okay? Do you have a way to fix it, okay? Do you have a way <clears throat> to cover your windows? I've talked about this one before. This time of year, we get plenty of cardboard, okay? Amazon boxes and Walmart boxes show up at everybody's doorstep constantly. Have you taken those out? Cut them to fit the windows, okay? Pre-done, okay? So when, and cardboard, I'm not talking about hurricane preparation. I'm talking about blocking out light, okay? Covering concealment, okay? You know, this is just concealment. Where, okay, something happened. We can cover the windows up and it's real simple. Pre-cut cardboard, poof, in the window, duct tape, and that one's done. Move on to the next one. How many windows you got in your house? 8, 10, 12, 15, 20? I don't know. How big's your house? I mean, I got what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 windows in my house. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's what would need to be covered. Those are the kind of preps that we need to consider concern ourselves with right now because... Everything is falling apart. We want to come out the other side of the tunnel. Like I said, not everybody's going to. But we need to make sure we do whatever we can to make sure we give ourselves the best possibility of coming out the other side so we can make America great again. Pinball out.